heart. We just finished celebrating Thanksgiving with family and friends, and let us just continue that gratefulness. And you know, as we come into the holiday season, um, let us just be thankful and thank God um, for every day that you know that we open our eyes, you know, and, and and He blesses us. He blesses us time and time again. So let us just come with a grateful heart today and just rejoice and just sing and just give Him all. Put all your worries aside and let us just, you know, focus on who He is and uh, you know we can do all things through Christ. Amen. Amen. So let us just start and um, let us just lift our voices up to the Lord. Amen. 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 Give Amen. Thanks. Amen. That's right, Natasha. Amen. We come into this house. Look at that on me. You know what? We come to praise the Lord this morning and give Him thanks for His faithful love. Amen. And we rejoice within our hearts, within our minds, and within our spirit. So we here at Love Wings Ministry we want to share that with you, my brothers and my sisters. We give a shout out to Full Gospel Tabernacle in Far Rockaway, Queens, New York, and West Palm. What is it? Renew. Uh, what is it again? The name of the church? Amen. Renovado. Renovado. In Spanish. Pastor Hernandez and all the pastors out there that we got to meet and those that we did yesterday, we just thank God for you guys. Amen. But we come with the truth, but we know that we want to worship the Lord with all that shit in us. Right, in the Amen. Just one man bad, but you know what? The Bible says that we should come in with hope and thanksgiving in our hearts and with praise. God is good, amen. And that's why right in the house we rejoice victoria within. We rejoice within. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, man. Hallelujah.
as we uh, prepare to sing this song, hallelujah, um, we just give God all the glory and all the praise, and we thank him, um, you know, for what he has done, yes, you Lord. know, and as we come, um, actually, you know, towards the end of um, uh, a new, uh, you know, this, yes. this year, um, let us just, you know, think yes. back at all, you know, the things that God has, um, you know, provided the doors that he's yes. opened for us, um, opportunities and stuff, and um, and just give God glory. Yes. Give him praise, give him thanks, give him thanks through those trials, because through those things, we, um, you know, we, we, we get our strength, um, yes. our faith yes. increases, and, um, you know, because we learn to depend on him. Um, you know, for 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 all things, and I just thank God for having that relationship with Him. Amen. Yes. So let us prepare to sing uh, a new song unto yes. the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, you might have heard it on the radio, a uh, Christian radio station. It's called "God Is Fighting for Us." He is on our side. Even that—that's a beautiful word. And no, please don't. You know, the mics you got them off uh, because it's getting feedback. Amen. But again, it says what? God is fighting for us. Amen. He is on our side. That's the first verse. And then it says he has overcome. Yes, he's overcome. Hallelujah. And then Amen. it says uh, we will not be shaken and we will not Amen. be moved. Amen. Jesus, you are what? Here. And then there's a music interlude there. Amen. And then but I want to give you the chorus. It's just saying this. I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me. And I am free in Jesus' name. And then again we repeat it. I will live and I will not die. Amen. And I will declare and lift, your, lift you high. Amen. Christ reveals and I am healed. In Jesus' name. Isn't that a beautiful Amen. words? Amen. It's a little rock and roll or a rock, hot rock music. So bear with me because a lot of keys. But I want to try today because, you know, we got to we gotta do, the Bible says, uh, let us come in with a new song. Amen. 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 Okay, so here we go. Lord, help me. Oh, yeah, come on, let's clap.
saved by grace and saved by your mercy and your precious blood that continues to wash away our sins, Father. And we fall short this sweet word of yesterday. And whatever, Father, we come to you today and ask you to wash us with your precious blood once again, Lord, as we confess everything to you, Lord, and give you all the praise and all the honor. And knowing, Father, that you give us a love that So help us who? So help us God. We can do all things through him that strengthen us. Amen? Yes. But again, I want to give thanks to those that came out. Uh, we had Thanksgiving. Amen. And got to break bread. Amen. Um, I'm grateful. Amen. For Davis and, and Brandon and the family and my daughters. All of us here. Nina, Charles and so few of us, but we continue to stand in love and continue to share the truth. Amen? Yes. And we give a shout out to Pastor Hernandez and all of them out there again. That uh, We had a beautiful time yesterday. We had a beautiful time in Miami. Amen. See, Titi Ceci and what's the uh, what's uh, Adel and Titi Ades and the girls got to meet them and, and the family got to meet Davis and, and Brandon. Amen. And they're saying, bless. <laughs> 
It's a big family, right? Crazy family, isn't it? It's a loud family, isn't it? And Michelle and, and Adira, all of us were together, and that's, that's beauty, right? And us, when we were here, we were breaking bread together, family and friends day, amen. Uh, Nina, Charles, myself, all of us here as a family, loving on one another and sharing. So I'm going to get into the word, and I'm going to talk about today. I've shared several uh, messages like this is about what? The spirit of love, amen? We all fall in love, amen? And it's a beautiful thing when you find a person that you care for, and they care for you, and they uplift you, and they encourage you, and that's the love that God has given us through his word, amen? amen. So again, I want to start right away through the word of God, but before, Father, use me today, Lord. Father, as every word that I speak is your word, Lord. Father, Lord, and just share me with my brothers and sisters, Lord, to encourage them and to build them up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And everybody say it with me together. Amen, amen and amen. And I promise, uh, Pastor Hernandez, that I will whip out, oh, Brother Bombay. Amen. And I'm going to put a smile on Brother Bombay's face today. Amen with the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Who has Romans chapter 8, verse 9? Is there up there? Amen. Okay. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Amen. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. Mm -hmm. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Amen. That's a fact, and that's the truth. Amen. So what did she say? But you are not in the flesh, but in what? The spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have simply what? The spirit of Christ, he is, he is not his. Amen. So that's a statement and a declaration. Amen, so to speak. You got to, you know, know him in order to know what I'm talking about, about the spirit of love. Amen. Because the spirit of love will go out of their way to do anything for you. Amen. As God has done in our lives. Also, we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 12 and through 14. Who has it? Amen. Mm -hmm. That we might know the things that are freely given to us mm -hmm. of God. Thir uh, 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which words which man's wisdom mm -hmm. um, teaches, but with the Holy Ghost teaches, mm -hmm. comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned amen amen is that the truth so what she was saying is that now we have received not what the spirit of what the world amen we have not filled what the spirit of the world but the spirit of who is from who from god that we might know the things that have been freely, amen, given to us by who? By God, amen. And we could all point to the cross, amen. But that natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are what? Foolishness, amen, to him, nor can he know because they are not spiritually discern. Amen? Yes. So in other words, you know, you got to have that uh, uh, what's the word I can use, Lord? You have to have that true relationship with the spirit. Remember that we are what? We're, we're, we're what? We're body, soul, right? Body, soul, and spirit. Because without the spirit, we're dead. Amen? Amen. So God is preferring to his spirit, joining our spirit, but coming into one. But if we don't receive God's spirit into our spirit, amen, then we are dead. Amen. He's not in us. That's a fact and the truth. Amen. In other words, that, that's why salvation can only be received 
What? By what? Anybody? By what? How do we receive it? By faith. Amen. You got to have faith. You got to believe in something. Amen. Faith is in, in the natural. Amen. I mean, faith. Amen. Receive it by faith, rather. But in the natural, there is no understanding. Let me say this. No understanding of the spirit. Completely meaning of what? Being born of the spirit. And we must become his what? His children. Amen. That means that we are to be what? In the spirit too. Amen. What do I tell everybody? We're not, man, we are, as the Bible said, peculiar people. That means kind of strange people to those that are in the world, right? Because to them, they say, it's foolishness. How can, we were talking about, some people say, don't pray for me. Don't, they don't know what they're saying to them. So, oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad because we find that in a lot of it, they refuse to believe. They refuse to even believe in the spirit. But they believe in the things of the world. Amen. Isn't that the truth? They believe on the on the natural things instead of believing in the spiritual things that are the most important thing. Amen. Because again, we don't walk in the flesh, we walk in the spirit. For God is the spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in the spirit. So there's no doubt that we got to have the spirit of God. Amen. Is that right now? Yes. Anina? Amen. And we know that, and I'm telling you this today because I want to remind you as I remind myself. Amen. That we have to be in the spirit. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Who has that one? Don't you know that you yourself are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? Amen. And this is what I tell people all the time. Remember, he that is in you is greater than the things in the world. Right, David? But he that is in us also sees what we see. Amen. You know what I'm saying? He knows what we do. He knows what's in our heart. Amen, somebody. Yes. So it says what? Do you not know that you are the temple of God? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That we are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you, Charles. You don't belong to yourself. That's what that said. You don't belong to yourself. You know, Father's in us. The spirit of God is in us. Amen. Yes. And we got to remember that every day of our lives that you know what? We were bought with a price, which was Christ who died on the cross, so we can have that gift, which is what? Let's say it together. The Holy Spirit, Spirit which is God himself. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. And sometimes we forget the power that we have, that we have the power to bind and to loose and to walk in victory every day of our life, but we let the circumstances dictate our life. Yes. Because we get back into the spirit of the world. I refuse to give him that. Amen. So, Brandon, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you say, man, I'm a bad mama child. Amen. The spirit of God is in me, Brian. You say, say that to you. And David too. I'm bad. Amen. That spirit of God is in me. Amen. Devil, you got no power. Any negative thing has no power in my life. Everything that I speak, right, Nina? Everywhere we go, we walk in what? The supernatural realm. We have the power of God. Yes. Hey! Because God is in us. Amen. Yes. Let me say this. Here at Love Wings Ministry Studios, the church of believers are operating as what? As a commission by what? By Jesus. That empowers us by what, Nina? By what? The Holy Spirit. Jesus' plan includes every believer and his followers are to be what? What do we be? Witnesses to those that have lost, uh, what's the word I can use, Lord? Has lost their ways. It's sad because we all got friends like that. We all got people we want to help, but some of them just don't want to receive. Because it's dead. They're angry. You see what I'm saying? They're angry. Because this, the disappointments of life have put them in that, in that realm. Because they, instead of, you know what, uh, 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 asking God to intervene and say, man, Lord, help me. Amen. To understand. Help me. Uh, you know what? Open up your heart. Say, Spirit of God, come inside of me. Help me feel this void, this anger, this negativity that has surrounded my life that, you know, people have even committed suicide 
And those things, because, you know, we start stinking thinking again. We start thinking of the things of the world, what people say or neither, what people do to us. And we get, like, into a box and we put up these walls. And the only one that's, that's, that's hurting is you're hurting yourself. The world's going to continue to keep moving without you. Amen. Just like when we die, we cry and we say, yeah, we love that person there, but you're going to continue to live. Is that the truth? Yeah. Amen. You don't forget about them if you have a relationship with the cross because you love them, but you know what? you got to continue to live. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. i got to push, you know what, continuously in my life. Right? Those things that try to uh, bring me down, so to say. I'm going to just say it in plain word. Bring me down. And how do I do that? By speaking the word and knowing who I am and reminding myself day and night that the spirit of God is within me. Amen. Amen. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Amen. Because we're under the commission of by who? By Christ Jesus himself. We've been empowered by the Holy Spirit. Jesus' plan included that for every believer. Amen. But in order to receive that, you've got to believe. Yes. Amen. You can't be those kind of people that, you know, you tell them something, it goes in through here, yeah, 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 and then it comes out right out there. It's like you're in church and you hear, hey, yeah, you feel all, you know, spiritual. Hey, hallelujah. So when you walk out the door, you let all the things of the world and the bad spirits that's out there just jump on you. Amen. You know, I want you to picture this in your mind. It's like the devil and his demonic spirits are right outside the door. Can't touch in here, but he can touch you out there. So when you walk outside, he, what do you got? He got his leg out so you can fall flat in your face. Amen. And then we forget, and that's what his purpose is, to put things into our lives to forget the things that you just learned in church. Amen. Is that the truth? Remember this, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Who has it? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Oh, hallelujah. And this is what I'm saying. We've got to remind ourselves. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. For ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Yes. And ye shall be witnesses unto to me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria. Amen. So, how many people have heard that verse? Not all of us. Amen. And probably you out there too. All of us. You got to remind yourself. Remember that you shall receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come what, upon you, and you shall be my what witnesses to me here in Fort Pierce, for, <laughs> uh, New York, everywhere. I'm gonna be in the witness. Amen. That is power dwells within me. It says in what? Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and what? And to the end of the earth. Amen. So what does that mean? That we got to continue to renew our mind and water that seed. We were talking yesterday and we were sharing and I was talking about, and I shared it here on a Wednesday night, but I went to more detail about vision. We all have a vision, right? We want to accomplish something in life, right? Uh, and our first purpose that we should accomplish first is having what? A true relationship as a son and as a daughter of Christ. That means having that intimacy, the, 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 God, uh, the spirit of God within us. That should be our first priority. And when that happens, now what happens, we're opening the door to everything. Amen. That's possible. Amen. And he also gives us what? The desires of our heart. Because we're in line with God's word and God's purpose. That should be our first purpose. Everybody seeks for other things instead of seeking for God first. And I keep saying, I'm going to keep saying to him, blue in the face, amen, that Jesus said, you know, simply, like I was sharing yesterday with the division, how do we get vision and success and everything? Because that first seek what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness and his truth. As Jesus said. And even Jesus said, you gave them to me. And I keep reminding people as I remind myself. You, he says, Father, you gave them to me, but I pray for them. He's still praying for us. Amen. Interceding at the right hand of the Father to say, man, you know, I want them to be as one as I am one with you, Father. Then we 
will come and be with him. That's a statement. Don't you get it? He's not going to be with you if you're not in that place. We read the word, but do we really apply the word? Are we really walking in the spirit of God? Amen. So again, he says what? You shall receive the power of the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my what? Witnesses. So that means that your life is so important. Don't you know that? Amen. And those here and those watching me live, it's so important because the things that you do, and I'm going to keep saying it and keep saying it and keep saying it, <laughs> that what you do, it affects those around you. We think, oh, no, don't drink. Yes, it does, man. Don't lie to yourself. Don't let the devil deceive you. Oh, stand with you. Amen. It, it, it matters. Be careful what comes out of your mouth. Be careful how you live your life. Because you can't confess that you are a spiritually filled person and God's, you know, son or daughter and not live it. Because it will affect those around you. Because you become a witness. In other words, you don't belong to yourself no more, man. You've been bought with a price. But what's that price that God has put on us? Amen. Love. To me, that's my definition of that. It's just love. A love that never will forsake you. A love, a covenant that even when we fall short, he still loves us. People have fallen short on us. Is that the truth? Or done, done, think, right? Done, done. I was going to say done, done. <laughs> they think to us, right? And we have not forgiven them. And we hold that inside. You know what I'm saying? But when we read the word, what does God say? Forgive them as I forgive you. If you don't forgive them, then I'm going to hold my forgiveness back. I'm going to be straightforward. That's what that really means. The scripture is telling us. He says, in order to love, you got to know what love is, right? In order to forgive, you got to forgive. As he's forgiven us. That's why I don't hold nothing against him. Might can do whatever. I say, I forgive them. I got to deal with them after. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I forgive them because I'm not going to put no wall up between me and God and the spirit of God in my life. Not even for one second. Because that one second might be the last day that you're here on earth. And the enemy will jump on you. Oh, Lord. The enemy will jump on you in a flash. Amen. That's what he's waiting for. To destroy you. Because let me tell you, man. The Bible says when he's out like a roaring lion, even disguise himself like a lion. Like he's a king. You know, we define the lion as the king of the jungle, right? That's what he's saying. Define to, to look like the, 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 the lion to destroy you. And he'll jump on you. So we got to be careful. Amen. Remember, we are what? Witnesses of Christ because Christ is in us. So when they see you coming into the house, David, you know, the family, whatever, those that are not saved, they're going to say, man, they know that you're close to God. Who do you think they're going to come to and say, man, please pray for me? Talk to, talk to you, you know who, <laughs> on my behalf. Because you're the witness of Christ. You're the witness of God. Amen. That's the power that we have. We, we take it lightly, some of us. Remember who you are. Walk with, you know what? You're a child of God. Amen. Go ahead, Natasha. Oh, Miriam and uh, Paula. Miriam and Paula. Paula in New York and Miriam in Ocala. God bless you. I love you. Amen. They know what I'm talking about, my sisters. Amen. So remember, we are all to do the things, and I want you to even write this down if you can, but remember this. We are all called to do the things that what? Jesus did. You know what I'm saying? Jesus did. We were talking yesterday, and those that watched the video, we went about an hour and a half, right? We just went off. When you put a, people that love God together, we can't help but to share, you know? And, and share our experiences and talk about our testimonies of what they've been through. Oh, my God. Watch the video. You can hear like, wow. And the very thing they went through, they turned it around and using it for good to, because they're witnesses. Like I'm always saying, how can you share something with someone if you haven't done it or it hasn't been in you, right? How can you give something to somebody? Amen. Amen. 
So it amazes me because we say we don't see miracles. Yes, we do. Just get, you just got to hang out with positive people. Amen. People that are walking in the spirit. I don't want to hang out with negative people. I want to encourage negative people to be in positive. Amen. Yes. But it says what? Again, we can. We are doing. Uh, we are to do rather the things that Jesus did. Number one is to what? To preach. Amen. To proclaim. That's what that means. Preaching means to proclaim. To what? To share what? The gospel. Amen. You're called to do the same thing that I'm called that I'm doing right now. Right? Sharing the gospel. To preach. That's what that means. To preach is, is, is to proclaim something. Number two is to love God and have what? An intimate relationship with who? With him. Amen. Remember that uh, according to chapter 4 in Ephesians, it says that the believer, not just to, uh, to minister, uh, to leading, amen, or to be a disciple, I mean, or to be a what? A disciple and to what? To uh, be equipped to do what? The work of ministry. So what is the chapter telling us? That the believer is not just to be what? Ministering and leading, but are to be a disciple and what? To be what? Equipping other brothers and sisters. How do, you, how do we define that? Equipping other brothers and sisters? By being there for them. Amen. Helping them. Amen. But the most important thing is reminding them, amen, by what? We're called to what? To preach the gospel. To share the love of God, the truth. What God has done in your life. That's why I tell people the greatest weapon that we have is our testimony. Because while we're going through things, what happens, our faith develops and our relationship de develops stronger because of the things that we go through. That's why God allows us to go through things. And we have so many examples like Job, amen, what he went through, all of these brothers that went through something that we read about today about our ancestors and what we're saying, that paid the price but also done so much so we can have this word so we don't have to go that way, so to speak. Amen? As the Bible said, God said, I have a plan for your life and a road plan which way you should go. Is that the truth? Remember that a leader or pastors cannot fulfill the Great Commission by themselves. Is that true? They can't commit by themselves, and the believer cannot fulfill it without being what? Equipped. You want to be why you come to church, man. Why don't you empower yourself with knowledge? The strongest knowledge is the Word of God that gives us power for every situation. I don't care what situation you're in. Where do we go to the Word of God? Where do you learn? It's in the church. I went to church. I remember my pastor would preach up a storm. And I would sit there and I would just say, yeah, give me more. You see what I'm saying? But I would check the Word myself to make sure that what he's saying is in the Word. Amen. And then as I heard him, I said, man, I'm going to get hungry and thirsty. I started reading that Bible. Amen. And knowing all the promises, all the things that God has for me, amen. And, 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 and you know what? The direction, amen, and the love, amen, that he has as we study the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. We empower ourselves, amen. And you start, what, getting that knowledge. You start walking different. You start talking different. You start even looking different. Amen. You be walking looking good, right, y'all? Looking cool, looking good. Because what? The spirit that's within you will continue to illuminate God's love. Your personality, the person that you are. You start having a long life and then a prosperous life because you have peace and joy. You're not thinking of negative things, of killing yourself or doing harm to someone else or you're walking in anger. When you look anger, you look like Brother Bombay. That's how you look. Beady eyes and <laughs> your mouth is down because you're angry. You're, you're, dis you're walking in disappointment. You start even being disappointed in yourself. You start believing the things that they say about you in the world. 
But we got to remember, stop believing the thing that says in the Bible. Amen. That he that is in us is greater in all these gifts that he's given us that you are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. God took you out of it. He knew what you was going to be without even you were in your mother's womb. Yes, you went through suffering. Yes, we all have, just like Jesus. But the outcome is that we're blessed. Amen. With faith and strength. So again, I want to say that again. The leaders or pastor cannot fulfill the Great Commission by themselves. And the believer cannot fulfill it without being equipped. Why are you here today? You're being equipped. We all equipping ourselves, amen. You see what I'm saying? And what I've done here, you to do to somebody else. Is that the truth? And bring them to the house of the Lord so they can receive that, amen. Paul wrote to Timothy, saying, Therefore, I, re I remind you to what? To stir up the gift of God within you. Amen. Paul reminds Timothy, his own brother, this, a brother in Christ. He says, man, remember, man, Timothy, reminding him, man, stir up the gift that God has put inside you, man. That What does that mean in language? Term? Encouraging one another. Let's say, David, you come to me, man, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this test, so I'm going to get this job, and I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to pray with you. I say, you're going to do it, man. God's going to do it. Do your part. God will do his part. What I did, I just encourage you. Amen. But who do I put in the center of that? The Spirit of God. Remember the Bible said when two or three are gathered and that's what? Anything in his name? What happens, Brian? You're in the midst. You're in the, he's in the midst and what? He, 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 he'll give you that. Amen. Amen. That prayer will be answered. Yes. Amen. Remember, I forgot his name. Uh, it just reminds me back of the story. I was so proud of him. Amen. Uh, Selena's son, when he, you know, Napoleon, Napoleon yeah, I love his name, Napoleon. That's cool, right? Napoleon. <laughs> and Napoleon came to me and passed him, man, I gotta take this test, and he's in school. And remember, then he testified, he said, Pastor, I gotta go take this test. I said, well, you know, what did he do? He came for encouragement. See, he knew how to apply the word of God. He said, let me go to the pastor, you know? He says, Pastor, you know, I got to teach you, could you pray for me? And you're like, my daughters do all the time. I have been said, sure. So they, he prayed for me. And I said, you know, not only I'm I praying for you to take the test, but I said, I'm also praying for every student. And when you go take the test, before you take the test, don't even pray for yourself, because I just prayed for you. Amen. I told him, I want you to do is pray for everybody else to pass the test. Amen. Then if, I think a few Sundays passed, and and then he came to church, and I said, anybody want to share a testimony? He got up, he said, Pastor, I want to share a testimony. I said, okay. He said, I remember that day that you told me, that you prayed for me that I would pass the test. But when I got to the test to not pray for myself, but to pray for the other students, that they would pass the test. He said, well, I want to tell you that everybody passed the test. Amen. Amen. And I passed the test. Amen. See the power of God, because see, he really... What did he do? He believed for those things yet not seen or received, but he said, if he said it, I said it, we believe, and what? We encourage one another, but what? We remember the scripture, when two or three are gathered, he will answer the prayer. And what happened? It happened. And then it became a testimony, and he became, let's say it together, a witness of the power of the word of God. Amen. That's a true story. Amen. Again, remember that Paul wrote to Timothy, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God that's within you. And that's what I'm telling each one of you today. Amen. And those are watching me live. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6. Uh, Brandon, read me that verse. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift mm. of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Amen. Flaming, that's, you know what, reminding you. Laying hands on a brother, praying for them. Amen. That's the power that we have within us to, you know what, to share with others. See, God has given you a gift as he's given me a gift, right? As his children. So we're to what? 
Hold on to that gift? No. We're to what? Share that gift. Encourage, build up. That's what I call Damon's the spirit of what? Of love. Because you're going out your way for somebody else. Like I told Napoleon. I said, I prayed for you. We agree. We just you just got to believe for it. Amen. Now you go and you pray for others. Don't even pray for yourself because we already came into agreement and asked the Lord. So now you pray for somebody else and they pass, not just you. What did he do? The Bible says, prefer your brother and your sister before yourself. And that's what he did. So he was in line with what? With the word and with the spirit of God. And what happens now, what happens is God says, I got no choice but to bless them. Amen. I got no choice but to answer that prayer. Hey! Oh man, y'all ain't excited? <laughs> Don't you get the power that we have? Oh Lord. Amen. Come on. Jesus when Jesus uh, commissioned us to what? To go into what? Jesus commissioned all of us to go into what? To the world. Amen. And to do what? To preach the gospel. To what? To every creature. He said every person. Everything. Preach the gospel. Even if we have an animal and he's hurting, we pray for them. Amen. Like my daughter Erica, she has so many animals. She loves, the, she don't got one dog, she got the three or four dogs, all kind of animals. She prays for her animals. She treats them like children. They are gods. God created them. Amen. And remember I did a message, and what was the message that, that the world says today, and it's so true and profound, what is the greatest friend? What, what, uh, how to say it again? What's the greatest friend uh, for man, huh? A man's best friend. Let's say it. A dog. a dog. Is that true? They love you no matter what. When they see you, they get excited. They be shaking the tail. They run after you. They don't care how you look and if you smell. <laughs> they still love you. See, that's that we can learn something from that. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope you all got that. <laughs> Remember, when Jesus commissioned us in, into... Uh, 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 to go into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature. He said, Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and, seven, uh, and 17. Uh, 16 and 17, rather. I'm sorry. Is it Mark chapter? I hope I wrote this Mark right. 16, 15, 17. Yeah, go ahead. Who has it? And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to yes. the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, mm -hmm. but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Oh. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. Yes. They will speak in new tongues. Amen. Amen. Listen to that verse. And, and these signs will follow those who what? Who believe in who? In my name, and they will drive out demons. They will speak what? In new tongues. Amen. You know, we could define that as speaking in new tongues and the spiritual tongue language. Amen. And like it goes back to the upper room when Jesus descended. He says, I'm sending the great gift, which was the Holy Spirit that came, and it was like tongues of fire that hit upon each person. But what it, that was saying is there was translating in different languages while they were up there. That they, It was a day that everybody came in, a day of atonement. Everybody came together at that time. And as the Holy Spirit descended on the disciples, that Jesus said, go there and wait for me, amen, that I'm going to send the gift, which was the Holy Spirit. It says like it was like tongues of fire that set upon each forehead. And out of that, they started speaking in different languages, so the people that were outside understood exactly what they were saying. Amen. You see, that's the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit that we're talking about, the great gift that God has given us. Amen. You see what I'm saying? That, and to me, is again, the spirit of love, because we can communicate with everyone. Everyone knows kindness. Every every person, I don't care what language you are, they understand kindness. They understand compassion. Because there's something, sometimes you don't even have to speak a word. It's by your actions. Amen? 
by the things that we do to one another that you realize, do you understand what I'm saying? And, and that's so important. Amen. And again, that's the spirit of God, the spirit of love. Amen for me. Jesus also said that these signs will be given to confirm, listen to this, to confirm God's word. When we preach the gospel in what? In the power of who? Of his Holy Spirit. Not ours, but who? His Holy Spirit. Amen. The church that Jesus is building uh, and, 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 and uh, is what? Is determined by what? By the spirit of the power of God. Amen. You ever walk in a place and I'll be honest, in some churches, you go to some churches, oh, they got everything, the music's going up there, but they, you feel it in your soul, something's missing. Amen. Something's missing. I don't feel it. You understand what I'm saying? You walk into a place and you can feel the presence of God. It's because the place should be saturated with the presence of God. And how do we get that presence? By us being true believers and ushering that presence. Uh, Right. <laughs> to the place wherever we are. Because the blessings is in us, but also when we gather together, the blessing becomes stronger. So when you walk in a place and you hear prayer or you hear it, you know what? You start feeling what? The presence of God. And how's that present manifested? I'm going to tell you. Through you and I. What does the Bible say when you come into his gates with what? With thanksgiving in your heart. Right? Recognizing that he is who he is. Amen. That he is the great I am. He that is in us is greater. Right? So when we bring that together, amen, what happens? The presence of God descends. When we worship him, that's why it's so important that we're to worship and praise God. Because if you study the scripture, you'll know that that's what we're going to be doing in heaven for eternity. is worshiping and thankful and, 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 and joy. That's the kind of present that we need in the house today. Amen. That when you walk in a place, amen, I remember no matter what I went through that week, Nina, and I used to drive tractor trailers, man. I used to go to the GW Bridge. Right there, you can get frustrated of people traffic. I was always in traffic, man. And, 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 and People blowing the horns. They're not like here. They don't blow the horn over there. They blow the horns, man. They'll jump out their car. They'll let you know. They come out with baseball bats and fight in the in the, in. I, I've seen things that I was just the Lord help me. <laughs> in that atmosphere of confusion and anger and that spirit. Oh man. It all come, but man, I had so I, I couldn't wait to get to church on Sunday. Man. <laughs> I need to get the stuff off me because you're trying to stay holy. You're trying not. I can't hear. You know, I, I want to crash them sometimes with the truck. And I said, you know, and say things that are contrary to God's love. Amen. That's the best way I can say it. And I would get so. The anger would try to build in me, and I had to fight my flesh every day. And I couldn't wait to get to church. No matter how much I prayed, no matter how much I knew. There was something about when I came into the house of God. Is that when I stepped into the door, I felt the presence of God. Because I said, I'm in daddy's house. It's like, you know, when you were all day working hard, and you said, man, I can't wait to get home. You're tired. You know what I'm saying? You're, 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 you're uh, feeling kind of, your spirit is kind of down or, Maybe the things didn't go right in the job or someone said something that's negative. And, but when you walk in the house of God, you're greeted, you know, by Natasha. She grabs you, hugs you, oh, hi, or, or, or Amita, or Victoria. All of us, we hug each other. It's like, you know, ah. You know, it's like you, you feel that peace, the love of God. This is what I'm saying about being a witness. You start feeling that peace, the love of God. Or when you tune in, you say, man, I know I could depend on Pastor Benny and Natasha and, and Nina, a woman at the round table. They're going to be there on Saturday. Uh, they're going to have the, the they, I need a, I need some, I need some encouragement. That's what we do to each other. 
You know what that is? That's the love of God. That's exactly what God is saying. The spirit of God that dwells within you and I. You know what? Because we're what? We're comforting one another. Encouraging one another. And that's how the house of God should always be. Amen. Is that the truth? Amen, yes. Amen. Because remember, in him, God has given us what? An eternal covenant with us. You know what I'm saying? And that's the kind of thing that we have for one another. Amen? So again, I say all this to say this, man. Jesus said that these signs were given to confirm God's word. When we share the love of God, which is the gospel, and the power of his spirit, which is in his church, that's you and I, my brothers and sisters, as he came to what? To build and to demonstrate his love for us here on this earth. Amen. Is that the truth? Yes. And that's why I'm here. That's why no matter what, I know sometimes they get tired. You say, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And you keep doing it. Why? Because you know what? We're doing what God called us all to do. And imagine if I wasn't here or the churches are closed, and no one's preaching the gospel anymore. No one is sharing. No one is reminding others of the word that we continue to read and to apply into our life. Where would the world all be now? We would all be angry, uh, you know, uh, disappointed, amen, uh, not trusting anyone and living a life of bitterness, amen, having bitterness of forgiveness inside of us. And what is that going to do? It's going to destroy you. Amen. And we've heard so many young people and old people, every kind of people have committed suicide or something because they're misunderstood. Nobody took the time out to reach out to them. You see, people can put up a front, but you don't know what's going inside that person. Amen. <laughs> Because they, 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 they're scared to relate. They're scared to, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? To be honest with each other and say, yeah, I need help, man. I need God in my life. I see what, and you're the witness. I, say, I see how you're happy in your family. I want that too. But what does the devil put inside us to, to uh, our pride, especially men? You know, we get into this pride thing, and then, you know, I can do it better. I and mean, we become defensive. We, we become negative. You understand? When we try to do, uh, uh, do uh, what's that word? Do, uh, do uh, huh? Say? I'll, I'll do, yeah, I'll do that person or that family. And it becomes a competition. And it, it becomes hate and anger that develops. All these things develop. You know, that's why I said I'm always praying for churches and you know, and those that, that are out there because the church is what? People. I'm talking about people and to you out there. So I'm, I'm saying this here that I'm at the end of my message, but I want to say this to you tonight or this afternoon, this Sunday, that the spirit of love, the only way and the word of God can be shared today to all our families and our friends and even our enemies it's through you, my sister and brother, and us here. If we didn't take the time out, if I didn't take the time out to put all our finances, everything we have, we put it into this ministry to share the love of God because God has commissioned me, but remember this, he's commissioned you too to share the truth, which is the love, the spirit of love. To me, the word has always been love, and maybe... You know, I'm, I'm, what's that word? Um, I'm gullible because I choose to believe the word. I choose to believe in love and in the spirit of God. Not that I'm perfect, but I'm striving every day of my life. As and, and when we start realizing that and start doing the will of God, don't you know that you're opening up to every blessing in your life? My mama, if she's resting in peace now, he used to tell me, Benny, do things right and good things will happen. God watches over what we're doing with our lives and how we treat one another. In my heart today is I just don't want to come and preach. I want to talk about 
how beautiful God is and how beautiful his love is and how beautiful you are, my sister and brother, that you can change your family, you can change your friends, you can change the atmosphere in this world by sharing the love of God. But also remember that he gives you joy that the world can't take it or the devil can't take it. Amen. That surpasses our natural understanding of life. That's why the Bible said that God's ways are, you know, are not our ways because he knows that. That's why he gave us the word of God to teach us to walk in the spirit of love and he joined his spirit with ours. That's a, that's a blessing in itself, man. The greatest blessing we have when we accept Christ into our lives. And because through Christ, then God stepped in into our lives. So I pray that this message has touched you and has stirred your spirit because my heart has always been in my wife and all of us here. As we continue, we're just a small part of what God is doing in this earth, but we're going to shout it out as that song says, I will live. I will not die. The resurrected Christ is in me. Amen. Amen. And look at yourself that way because everyone in this room is so important and you too, my sister and brother out there. So I, I, my heart and desire has always been that this message has stirred your spirit and tuned your ears and brought you closer to understand what true love is and how much God loves you. And if you did that and you accepted the Lord, as I always say, please email us at lovewingsministry at gmail.com. And those that would like to participate, my daughter will pull up the address. We're here. And I'm waiting on you. I'll be honest with you. I'm waiting on you because I need help to share the gospel, the love of God. I need help. So we can go out to the byways, right, Deacon Athena, and to the, and to the airways and everywhere we can to share the spirit of love, which is God. And maybe that might seem corny to you. Maybe you, you know, you might be thinking that like that, but remember, we all need love. And what is the greatest thing in the Bible? Is love. Amen. So again, there's our address, amen. And also we're looking forward to doing a day of painting, right? Uh, having a painting here. What day are we doing that? I think it was on a Saturday at 3 p.m., amen. I think it was the 3rd or some of December. And then also we have our Christmas. I'm going to try to do a Christmas cantata, amen, on the 23rd, amen, uh, to, uh, to do that. And also we've been invited to go out to West Palm to do sort of a mini concert there. And I'm hoping that all of us here can go, amen, to help me to do that. And to share the gospel with them. Amen. Because uh, there's brothers and sisters that are hungry and don't have the things. Sometimes we think that we, we you know, the things that we have, man. We're so I'm, I'm grateful that we have music and God's given me the ability to, to sing and praise, worship, and all of us here that uh, some churches don't have. They have just music and, you know, CDs and, and, and someone to bring a fresh word. And God is calling us out of this, not just in Fort, Fort Pierce or Fort Sam, it's calling us out to other places and we want to be responsible to share and to be a witness to them also. So we'll be looking forward to going out there. So from Pastor Ben and everybody here, let's say it together. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen.